You have been looking at the projections for oil production put out by the IEA. Yes. They made a mistake? If you look at the flow rate that the uh, international agency have used, it's uh, much higher than uh, you ever seen in reality around the world. And, uh, of course, uh, we cannot uh, do things that it's not possible to do. So we bring it back to the normal things. For some of the regions, it was three times higher than it is possible to get out from the ground. And, of course, uh, that is a critical number. Three times higher than we've ever done historically. Yes, yes. When do your figures say we will hit peak oil? We hit peak oil in 2008 according to the numbers we have. And we can say we are at a peak plateau uh, because uh, since 2005 uh, we have had around 85 million barrels per day and we still is around that number. And uh, we will be ups and downs from that number a couple of years more before it starts to decline. How come no one's noticed? Because we had a depression. We had a couple of years when the global economy went down. And uh, a depression means that you use less soil. You had a theory about peak oil's role in the GFC. Uh, I think that uh, one of the triggers, and maybe the strongest one, uh, was uh, the price of oil. Because people could not afford to go to work and pay their houses at the same time. And as in the US, you can just uh, turn back the house to the bank. They did that. And that was the beginning of the downs. Uh, that was the be beginning of, of uh, the, uh, the fall of the economy, I guess. Now, surely you're wrong in that with better and better technology, we'll simply be able to find and extract more of the oil mm -hmm. that's there. We say that uh, till 2030, 2050, uh, 200 uh, billion barrels of oil will probably be discovered. But the problem is that we consume so much oil, 30 billion barrels per year. So um, today we are consuming more than the oil industry finds, and that's for every year. So it's like using more money than you should do in your bank account. Of course, you have tar sand, but uh, again, uh, we have made a so-called crash management uh, analysis of the tar sand production in the future. And there is tar sand that is uh, on the surface that you can uh, uh, get out from pit mines, you know, uh, but that's the smallest fraction. The biggest fraction are so deep, so you need to boil water and inject steam into the ground to soften it up and get it out, you know. Uh, to do that, in the future, you need to build nuclear power plants just to boil water and uh, inject that into the ground. And uh, the Canadians uh, are doing this now. So it's not going to come and save us, tar sands? Oh, no, no, no. no, no. It may, might be it save Canada. But what's going to happen over the next 10 years? If you look at the next few years, uh, uh, everyone is hoping for uh, an increase in the global economy. And... Um, at some point, I think we will, we will reach the limit uh, uh, because the, we cannot take uh, too high price of oil. Uh, the fact that uh, oil was reaching $147 per barrel, that was a level that was too high for the global economy to uh, function. So uh, hopefully the oil price will stay where it is just now. And uh, the best thing is that we try to reduce our consumption so we don't put a pressure on the uh, on the price. From now till 2050, there will be another 2.5 billion people on the planet, and we all need food, and we are just close to the limit uh, when it comes to energy, what we uh, can use for producing food. So uh, that's the main say, problem for the future that we need to uh, rethink when it comes to food production. What should governments be doing? First of all, look into transportation and see how do we, uh, how do, how will this affect our future? I mean, should uh, should we uh, uh, have uh, rail, for instance, uh, for transportation? Should we may, should we plan cities in a different way so we don't uh, have uh, so much uh, transport between uh, work and uh, our houses and between. Uh, shops and so on. Uh, these things take time to change and we should start to do that immediately. I'm scared for the future when it comes to these things, that uh, 
that uh, people don't understand it and they don't uh, understand what is needed for the future. And that's one of the reasons why we're trying to uh, do our best to get people to understand the future.